In this video, I'll be sharing the single best machine learning project that will take you from beginner to pro and give you that unfair advantage. I mean, this project got me an interview at Google DeepMind and taught me almost all the basic skills it takes to be a machine learning pro. You'll see what I mean. So what is this magical project? Re-implementing a paper and recreating its results. Is it easy? No. No, it's not. But if you follow the steps I break down in this video, it's really not that scary. I promise. Let's get started. What is step one of re-implementing a paper and recreating its results? You guessed it. Of course, we first need to read the paper. I have a whole separate video on how to read a paper, but here I want to show you my method of reading a paper with the specific purpose of re-implementing it. What I need for this process are text markers in three different colors. Well, I personally use my iPad to read and highlight papers, but you get the point. When reading the paper, there are three important parts I'm looking out for and have a separate color for. Color number one is for general understanding. We of course want to highlight the parts that we think are generally important for the understanding of the paper. This is nothing all too new. Now, color number two is a bit more specific to our task of re-implementing the paper. We here want to actively highlight the parts relevant for the implementation. This includes things like the used loss function, architecture details and hyperparameters. When highlighting these parts, you can already start envisioning how you would start to implement the architecture and which other repositories you already know that have similar implementations that you can use for your own new implementation. Or you write down a list of common modules you need to look up existing implementations for. The idea here is you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are a lot of public implementations of transformer blocks, for example. So you don't necessarily need to re-implement that from scratch without any help. You of course could with the purpose of learning, but in my opinion, depending on the paper you choose, you will already have enough work to do. Okay, now to the final color. Color number three is for something very specific. Datasets. Since we want to not only re-implement the paper, but also recreate the results to actually verify whether we implemented the paper successfully, we need to train on the same datasets and evaluate on the same ones. Highlighting those should not be too difficult. Finally, it might also be important to perhaps look for details about the compute that the authors used. If the author is trained on LLN on 50 A100s, it might be difficult for you to reproduce actual results but you might still implement the paper and train a model of smaller scale. But then you just can't really compare the final performance. Okay, now that we have read our paper and found all the relevant information, it's time to get to work. The first task I recommend you tackle are the datasets. This means you need to find the datasets on the internet and figure out how to download them. In my experience, this can be trickier than you might think, but not too difficult. After having downloaded all datasets, or even just one, you can get to the step number two of handling the datasets, implementing the dataset and data loader classes. If you have worked with PyTorch before, you will know what those are. This should again not be too difficult and rather fun. A data loader will be used to provide data in a pre-processed format, so that you can very consistently get a batch of data and just focus on the training logic. When implementing the dataset and data loader classes, I generally also recommend to use Jupyter Notebooks, because those make it very easy to save certain variables like the path to the dataset and visualize everything you need. Oh, and one final thing is that if working on a reinforcement learning paper, the equivalence to implementing dataset classes is setting up the gym environment. Okay, time for the model architecture. We're getting serious now. This might be the most scary part. Or not, it again really depends on the paper. Perhaps your paper focuses more on a new training technique rather than new architecture. But let's finally get to it. Since you have highlighted the novel elements of the architecture and found existing implementations of modules you might need, I would recommend to just start coding. Don't think too much about making it right the first time. Start writing your torch.nn.module class and initialize all layers you think you might need. If there are larger, more complex modules, you can directly start to write a function 
for those. For example, a Qformer block. Perhaps part of your model is an LLM. In that case, you will most likely just want to import it from Hugging Face. Just dump every block and module you think you need into the init function and then get to the forward pass. Here, once again, don't overthink it. You might have a model architecture diagram in the paper that describes the layout of the modules, in other words, the flow of the data. Without thinking too hard whether the output shapes make sense or whether you have everything in the right order, just implement what you think makes sense. Think of it like this. You want to build a LEGO castle, so you first spill out all the LEGOs. You then somewhat cluster the right pieces together for the towers, walls, doors and so on. You have everything in front of you, you now just need to make every piece fit together with the others. Now that you have your first model architecture draft, you can get yourself your data loader, get a batch and pass it into the model. It will not work, the model will be broken. The LEGO doors don't fit into the walls. That is what we 100% expected. We now get our debugger, I recommend using VS Code, and step through the code tackling one bug after the other. Your initialization doesn't work because you have some dependency issues. Fix that. Your data passes into the model. Amazing, but there is an error when being fed into the first layer because the layer was initialized with the wrong input shape. Fix that. The output of the first layer does not fit into the following layer because of another shape issue. Fix that again. The door does not fit into the wall, but you see why. The door is one block too wide, so you remove one column of blocks. Now it fits. Are the output shapes of the significant modules the shapes you expected? The shapes that were described in the paper? This development through debugging, fixing one problem after the other, is what it really means to implement something. Repeat this process until you have no errors your IDE throws at you. The bugs up until now are arguably the easy ones. In the next step, when actually training the model, we might encounter bugs that the IDE can't find. The code runs smoothly, but the model does not learn anything. But before we get to that point, let's implement the final building blocks we need. There are two ways you can approach training, depending on your paper of choice. Either you need to implement the loss, metrics and training loop on your own, which shouldn't be too hard, or you use existing libraries for the optimization process like the Hugging Face Trainer. You there only need to provide the model, dataset and training arguments. I personally would recommend, if suitable in your case, to use such an existing implementation and read through the documentation or tutorials to understand how to properly use them. At this point, we again get out the VS Code debugger, step through one training iteration, debug the hell out of the training steps and remove all basic errors that the IDE throws at you. Now the IDE can't help us anymore. Now we need to start training runs and look at logs of loss, metrics and specific examples. If the loss is behaving weirdly, we might still have a bug in the code that is not a normal error that breaks the code, but that breaks the learning process. That is why the arguably most important part of the training loop, or trainer implementation, is logging the metrics. Seeing the loss of your model progress with each epoch and actually seeing examples of input and output of your model changing over training will be the only way for you to figure out if your model is learning as you expected or not. I here recommend to use weights and biases. I've used it for all of my projects and really love it. I'm certainly not sponsored or anything, but with weights and biases you can do everything you need. Log the loss and metrics as well as samples to actually see input and output of your model. For example, for an image captioning model, you can log the input image and predicted caption to see the progress. You can then use exactly these graphs and visualizations to discuss problems with teammates or friends. As mentioned, the great thing is that you know how training or final results should roughly look like, since you are trying to achieve the same ones as in the paper you are re-implementing. This means the paper gives you not only rough instructions on how to build your LEGO castle, but also shows you how it should look like in the end. So now the final steps are again just debugging, comparing to the paper, and more debugging. Of course, these exact steps might not all make sense for your specific paper you want to re-implement, but I hope the majority does and the overall approach of breaking down the complex task of re-implementing a paper into smaller and more manageable steps helps you. This is a challenging project, perhaps more, perhaps less. 
depending on the exact paper you have selected. But either way, this project will teach you so much, be an impressive project to show your friends and employers and definitely give you an unfair advantage over those who have not worked on such a project. And after spending so much time working on this project, you might want to watch this video next where I share a tip on how to really give your work that final polish and make you stand out on your ML application. Bye bye!